Hello, this video is for people who have never made soap before and would like to do it for home use. I'm not going to use any fancy oils, things that you can't get a hold of at your local store, except your lye. Lye cannot be purchased on the shelves anymore. You have to order it online unless your state is different. So you would have to purchase the lie. Uh, we'll go over the things that we need. You can purchase this at Walmart. It is pure coconut oil. If you want to go organic, they offer the organic coconut oil on the same shelf. You will find it close to the lard on your baking aisle and you want to pick up some lard. The next thing you want to pick up is vegetable oil. You want to flip the container around and you want to make sure it says only soybean oil. You don't want any other ingredients and you don't want it to say could have traces of nut or peanut oil. You want it to only say soybean oil. You do not have to buy expensive, just plain the cheapest uh, <clears throat> soybean oil you can find. You can get this at Walmart or most drugstores. This is glycerin. Um, if you want to be a little bit more conservative with your recipe, you can use a vegetable based glycerin. This is what I use, which is a glycerin that is vegetable based. And I purchase it from New Directions Aromatics online. But you can pick that up at a health food store in smaller quantities because this is for the person who is just going to make soap maybe for themselves, their friends, um, maybe to store away in case of a tragedy. Um, maybe you're going to vacuum seal it and put it in your bug out uh, case or uh, store it in an underground facility uh, so that you have an inexpensive soap that will work good um, and will be storable for the future. Now this is vitamin E. I did pick this up at my health food store. You want to have that. It's not a requirement, but it is a healing element to the soap. Uh, you want to have a small bowl. And this is dirty because I'm currently making soap. I've got several crock pots going at the moment. Um, this uh, it's just got oil on it. Um, this is a stainless steel. You don't want to use anything that is aluminum. Only stainless steel. Um, it's good to have a bowl that measures out cups, a four cup or two cup measuring cup, and a whisk. As I said, stainless steel. Now, this is a postage scale. You can pay big money to get a scale that is designed for soaping, but you can pick up a United States Postal Service scale. I believe you can even purchase them from your local post office and you can use that. Now I'm going to try to make this recipe so that you can do it with a measuring cup. I'm going to attempt it in this video. We'll see how that works. For those of you who do not have a scale and this is not for retail sale, this is for your personal use. Um, also, you want an extra virgin cold pressed olive oil. This bottle is empty. It's one I was using for cooking. I have a much bigger bottle that I use out of. It has a little in the bottom. But this olive oil is just so that you could see to purchase a small bottle. Or you can use the olive oil that you have in your kitchen right now. But it is better for the skin if you're using the extra virgin, the dark green or almost green yellow 
olive oil. All right, another thing you're going to need is a sharp knife to cut your soap with. Um, this is a luxury. You don't have to have this, but they sell these at Walmart, and they have an inch lines on them. These are sold in the where they have the materials for baking fancy cakes. This is in the cake section, but not like baking, like where you get fancy things for making, for decorating cakes. It's plastic, it has a film on it, so it's easily to easy to clean, and it's durable. But this is just a luxury, you don't have to have this. And then you have to have some type of container that you're gonna pour your soap in for uh, to let it harden. Uh, and we'll go over those uh, options a little later. Now this is the one thing, this is the lie. You can purchase this on eBay or you can go to Essential Depot, I guess that's .com, yeah, EssentialDepot.com and purchase their lie. They have a one, I think one and a half pound container, I think for $3.45. But they also have a four pound container for $10.49. This container will make you four to five batches of, of soap, depending on if you use this recipe or if you use alter the recipe. I'm going to discuss with you how you can alter your recipe to some degree to make a larger batch. All right, so I'm going to move away from this station and we're going to start. Oh, and you need a crock pot. Sorry about that. We need an older crock pot. I prefer that you do not use the crock pot that is in your kitchen sink. I mean in your kitchen cabinets. I prefer that you go to a junk store or a used store or a yard sale and pick one up that you're only going to use for um, making soap. Um, this crock pot, as you can see, has some soap residue, but it's just your average size. It's not the little one. It's your average, what everybody used to consider as the only size. Now, as you can see, I have several crock pots going with soap right now, but this is the extra big size. And you can purchase one of these, and you would want to double the recipe that I'm going to show you today. Um, I don't have those going at the moment. All right, but I have this one set aside for us to work with today for our soap for personal use, maybe preparing ahead, and maybe you're going to um, um, put it in um, Ziploc bags or vacuum seal it or just personal use to put in your own bathroom. All right, I will bring you back. Okay, now this is our coconut oil. This is also 12 ounces. I accidentally went over one point, but that's such a, it's not worth the concern over. Same thing. This is slightly over an ounce and, th I mean, uh, a cup and three quarters. Just slightly over. Okay, now we're going to start cooking our soap. Okay, now we want 12 ounces of our lard. I have heated this lard in the container so that I could see what it came to on our scale of cups. This is one cup, this is a cup and a half, and this is two cups. We are slightly over a cup and three quarters. You can see that here's the line and it's just slightly over. I don't recommend this, but if you do not have a scale and you want to attempt making soap, um, that is a measurement scale. Okay, now we're going to do the coconut oil. Okay, now we're going to measure our vegetable oil. I highly recommend a scale. This is 7.5 ounces of soybean oil. And my scale is lightly crooked. But when I level this, it comes not to a cup and a fourth. If you can see, 
that this line is a cup and a fourth and this is slightly under it um, and this is a cup and a half so this is slightly below a cup and a fourth so I still recommend a scale because lye and oil it's a very particular thing but if you don't have a scale and you want to try to do it with a guess then this is what you can do okay we need our lye now we need a dry container that has no moisture in it and we need five ounces on the scale or one half cup now the way we do that is we turn our scale off put our measuring cup on and turn the scale back on that will bring your scale to zero then you can pour your lye into your container so we need five ounces or to the best of my ability to tell with the measuring cup is one half cup it could be just a touch under so but that's the best guess I can come up with for measuring it off of a scale is it slightly below one half cup okay so now we have our lie we can set that aside now this lie is safe as long as it doesn't touch water the moment it touches water it becomes unsafe so we want to keep this at the back of our counter away for, from children away from a place that we might accidentally like we don't want to sit it beside the sink where water could splash into it um, we don't want to set it um, in a place where you might accidentally bump it or turn it over so that line needs to be put away and out of reach of children or in a safe away from water area okay now we're going to measure our water I only recommend using a pitcher and um, I guess that's a two quart a half a gallon pitcher you can pick those up from the Dollar Tree or from Dollar General I suppose also Walmart a nice thick plastic not one of the thin flimsy ones the reason I do this is because it puts the water and lye down here in the bottom so it's not easy to spill it has a good handle it's easy to hold on to and you can put your whisk all the way down into the bottom and whisk without worry of the lye water splashing up it's deep and it's skinny it's just perfect so this is what I recommend that you use now the way I do it is I turn my scale on and that gives me a zero and then once I have a zero I have a second one and I've already put 11.9 um, um, ounces of water in here okay so but let's see what that comes out to in our measuring cup that's our measuring cup it's got a little bit of water in it let me get that out okay now we're going to turn on our scale that zeroes out and we're going to measure again and this is our 11.9 ounces of water and as I said my table is slightly not level so when I level that it is, and I'm, I'm knowing you can't see this with my camera, but it is one, it is in between one and one third cup, or just slightly above one and one third cup. That's slightly above one and one third cup. And I highly recommend that you use a scale. Um, so, for your measuring, I'll take off my glove. This is one and a third 
and our water level is just slightly above it. So that's how much water you need. Now let's pour that back in our container. And we're going to add our lye. Make sure you wear gloves. And you want to put this not close to the edge of a counter. You want to put it in the back. Sit it in your sink uh, as long as your sink has a level space so it won't tip. And all you do, oh, I forgot. If you have not had a scale, I want you to take one teaspoon of this lye away and put it back in your bottle, okay? This will give you a healthy margin because if you put too much lye in your soap, then your soap could still zat you, as they say. So by taking away one teaspoon of your lye, you guarantee to some degree that you won't end up with too much lye in your mixture. Because, and I highly recommend that you're using a scale, but I'm trying to help out people who don't have a scale and are trying to make soap for their own personal use here. So that's why I'm saying take away a teaspoon. And that way you have a safety margin. And if you feel like you really might have messed it up, take away a tablespoon. It won't hurt anything. So... Now I need to get my gloves back on. Okay, and I'm going to dump my lye. And by having a container that's smaller than the opening, you can do the bounce. And then I'm going to put the whisk in here and whisk. Do not get over the top of the container. You want to step away from the container because there's fumes. If you're in your kitchen, turn on your stove vent. Or you can do this outside. If you don't have any dogs, it's liable to jump up and knock it over on you. I have dogs. Normally, I do this in, uh, in my kitchen with my stove vent on. But for this video, I'm stepping clearly as far away from the container as possible so not to breathe the fumes. Okay, never put that down on your counter. Always put it in something glass so that you can take it straight to the sink. And you can set that far back away from the edge of the container. If you have children, running around in your house, do not do this. Just wait till they're not, uh, wait till at night when they're asleep. Now I'm going to put this in the sink and I'll come back in a few moments and we'll start cooking our soap. Okay, now we're going to mix our lye with our oils. I have, you have to wear gloves. I highly recommend that you wear shoes, long pants, and that you wear goggles. Now, I have uh, put the oils in the crock pot. <clears throat> Every crock pot's a little different on temperature, so it could take 10 minutes and it could take 30 minutes, but only on low, and you want to heat up your oils until they're melted. Or, if you've measured your oils uh, and you've had to heat them first in the microwave, then your oils are already hot, but you want to warm them up just a little bit for about 5 minutes, 10 minutes in your crock pot. Now, you can use a whisk. You can use a wooden spoon. And you never want to use this spoon for anything but soap. And repeated use of a wooden spoon deteriorates the spoon and you have to throw it out. So when I find them cheap, two for a dollar, I buy them, use them a few times. As soon as they look like they're deteriorating, I throw them away. But you will stir forever and ever and ever. This is a stick blender. I highly recommend that you get one. If you have one already, remember you're putting this in lye. I never use a stick blender again for food purposes after I have used it with lye. You stick your stick blender in and you have your lye firmly in hand 
you put your stick blender on high then you stop and you go put this in the sink where it's safe and you flush it with water okay I have flushed my pitcher with water and left it in the sink and remember if you have children running around just don't do this let me bring you up so you can see what it looks like Okay, now I'm going to take a break for about two minutes, and then I'm going to do it again. Okay, we're still at it. And I just wanted to give you an opportunity to see how thick it is. This is not trace yet. This is still too thin, and we do not have trace. You might say that there's a very, very light trace because you can barely see a mark on the, the other soap when I knock it, but this is not what we're looking for. And so we're still just working with our stick blender to bring it to trace with our crock pot on low. And this could take you anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes, depending on your crock pot. And you just keep stirring. If you don't do this, your soap will separate and it will boil over. You have to do this. This is not a stage that you can forget. Okay, I'll bring you back. Okay, this is what I call a light trace. Can you see the swirls in the soap? It's starting to get very custardy in its consistency, and it's gloppy. This is a light trace. This is not what we want, but it's close. All right, I'm just going to keep going, and I'll keep you in the loop. Okay, we have came to trace. It took about 20 minutes. When... I knock I know that was loud but that's the only way to do it you have to get all the residue off your stick blender now if you'll notice there are puddles in the soap and it's very gloppy this is what we want this is called a heavy well this is called a heavy trace there are such a thing as a heavier trace than this, but this is what we want. All right, now we're going to put the lid on our crock pot. And now for the first hour, you are going to stay in the presence of your crock pot because your crock pot can boil over. And if it gets close to the top, you want to turn it off, take off the lid, stir it, and then you want to put your lid cracked like this so it's not perfectly sealed leave the crock pot off for 10 minutes and then cut it back on low and leave your lid cracked some crock pots they just get hotter than others so you have to watch them very closely all right I'll bring you back okay this is what we call getting close to a boil over it's not really there but it's getting extra bubbly so I'm gonna crack the lid so that just a little bit of heat can get out now we're gonna cook this for two hours but for the first hour you have to stay close to it because of this particular reason now I'm gonna take you over here and show you what soap looks like after it's been cooking for an hour and you can see it is 
doubling over on itself. It's rising up around the edges and folding in towards the middle. When you stir it, it has pockets that looks like Vaseline, but yet it still has some whiteness and cloudiness to it. This soap has been cooking for just a little bit over an hour. This soap is not made out of the same oils that yours is. This has some more, you might say, exotic oils in it. Oils that are more expensive. Oils that you have to order or go to health food stores and seek out and pay high dollar for. But it's all the same in the cooking process. All the soap will look pretty much the same as it's cooking. Always beat your spoon off well and then put your lid back on it. Here you see this one I've already stirred one time and it is beginning to come up again. Usually it will do this a good two times before the soap is ready. Here is a soap that has been cooking for an hour that I've already stirred and we're just starting to get it to foaming up on the edges where it's going to come up and turn over on itself. Okay, we'll keep an eye on our soap and remember if it starts getting close to the top then we're going to stir it. Otherwise we're going to leave it alone until it's cooked for an hour. If you fear that it's going to boil over, cut the heat off for 10 to 20 minutes and let your crock pot cool down some. Just remember to turn it back on. You don't want to leave your crock pot off for the rest of the cook time. Just let it cool off for 10 to 20 minutes and then cut it back on. Okay, this is a website that you'll want to visit. You don't have to visit for this recipe, but as you begin to maybe want to branch out and do more things with your soaping, Maybe you don't want to just do it for personal use. Maybe you want to do it for friends and family. You might want to choose more, um, I don't know, maybe we might use the word exotic oils. Uh, like avocado oil, sheena butter, cocoa butter. And this website is called SoapCal.net. S-O-A-P-C-A-L-C dot net. Then you will look and you will click on the soap calculator. Here you can choose different oils, work with it, click and you can click to calculate the recipe and then view the recipe and it will tell you exactly how much lye, how much water and all the different factors of your recipe. So you can consider these and it shows you how hard the recipe will be, how soft, how cleansing, how conditioning, how bubbly, how creamy, and so forth and so on. So this website is a good website for a soaper to go to. It's not necessary for this particular uh, project that we're doing, your first time soaper, but it is a good website that you will enjoy. Okay, our soap has been cooking for an hour. It is boiling over onto itself. If you can see the almost clearness of that Vaseline look, that is what we're looking for. Now we're going to stir this soap one time at the hour point. Scrape down the sides. Okay, now as I said, I'm making this soap for homemade laundry detergent. So I'll probably put this video out there, parts of it, as an attachment for a homemade laundry soap detergent um, video. But this is also wonderful for preparing ahead for disaster. You can um, put this soap in a vacuum sealer and seal it up. It'll just last you forever. Um, but one of the things I wanted to talk about was essential oils. 
Now, as I said, tea tree, which one of these is tea tree, tea tree is like putting antibiotics in your soap. You can purchase these in small bottles at your health food store. Um, make sure that you seriously consider tea tree as an additive to your soap. You can read about other uh, essential oils that are great for health. Lemongrass is another soap that is another soap, another uh, essential oil that has been known to be healing, especially for acne. So that would be a nice additive to add with the tea tree to give it a little lemon scent. Um, the tea tree sort of has a, a mossy, musky wood smell. Um, so you could add a little lemongrass as well. Now there's all kinds of wonderful essential oils out there. Another one is cedarwood. I still have some empty bottles in the little. Um, this cedarwood I bought at a health food store for $5.50. Cedarwood has been known for ages to repel insects. So bathing with cedar also takes away your natural odor and makes you smell like part of the forest. Another great one is pine. I know I have it here somewhere. There's different, there's, this is scotch pine or pine scotch it says. Um, this is wonderful for making you not smell like a human and making you smell like the woods that you're possibly hiding in. But it's also great for uh, also um, causing insects to avoid you. But it does not have as good a properties as your cedar wood. Now this is a new one for me and I've just bought it. It's called citronella. Citronella has been used for maybe not ages, but for a long time. Uh, it's used in all those citronella candles and whatnot. It has a very lemony scent, would go very well with your tea tree, and that's also a wonderful additive that you can add to your soap. I do recommend that you pick two scents, one of them being tea tree, and then you can add the other. Citronella is untested for me. I'm ju I just purchased this bottle. I'm just starting to try it. I've had it highly recommended on YouTube by other soapers. And so you can check out some of their videos. All right. Now we're going to talk about super fatting. I'll bring you back in just a moment. Okay. Now we're going to talk about super fatting. Super fatting is oils that's sitting in the soap that did not saponify during the cooking process and is there to moisturize your skin. If you have oily skin, you might want to reduce this amount. For an average person, I put in 3 ounces. I went over by a point, but I'm not worried about it. I have put in 1 ounce of olive oil and 2 ounces of coconut oil. You can use the organic or the regular that's purchased at Walmart. And on the olive oil, I have made, I have purchased the first pressed, cold pressed, extra virgin olive oil. Now we want to add, um, we want to add vitamin E to our mix. So I'm going to put one table, one teaspoon of vitamin E in our super fats. Then we're going to add glycerin. I use the vegetable base. You can purchase what they sell at Walmart or a local drugstore, or you can go to a health food store. Okay, I'm going to measure that out. Okay, I've poured that in. That's one tablespoon of glycerin. Now, if you are making this for laundry detergent, you would not want to super fat your soap. Just leave it like it is. Okay, now we're going to talk about fragrance while our soap is cooking. There is a fragrance calculator on brambleberry.com. You would choose rebatch soap because they don't list hot process and rebatch is pretty much the same thing. You would pick 32.5, no sorry, 32 ounces on your scale of what you're making because it's only the oils that count and then on the bottom you have your essential oils on the right and your fragrance oils on the left. Fragrance is chemicals. It's chemically designed to smell like 
let's say here baby rose fragrance oil over here this is essential oils of animals I mean sorry animals plants flowers leaves bark roots different things of that sort today I would advise that if you're going to purchase an essential oil that you would consider using tea tree as one of your fragrances so I'm going to click on tea tree tea tree is a wonderful healing additive to soap especially if you're going to be using this for a time of crisis and you're going to be storing it away tea tree is like an antibiotic in the soap it's great for healing wounds when you sorry about that my battery gave out on my camera so I had to put in a new battery so here it tells you that if you want to settle you're to point point sixteen ounces one ta teaspoon and zero tablespoons so it's not a whole tablespoon one teaspoon um, if you want a medium strength 0.32 ounces or two teaspoons if you want it strong which is what I recommend if you're going to be using this for well just your everyday soap it heals acne it fights foot fungus it controls it it prevents it cures it uh, it kills head lice um, tea tree is a wonderful essential oil check it out online but it says here that you're to use 0.64 or 4 teaspoonfuls I highly recommend even if you're going to add another fragrance in the mix that you still add 4 teaspoons full of your, of your uh, tea tree essential oil you won't regret it it will be wonderful in your soap it will keep you healthy skin wise that is okay now I'm going to show you how to super fat your soap oh let me show you how it's ready see how glistening and oily and Vaseline looking it is and this is cooked for two hours now I've turned the crock pot off and I'm going to add my super fats now I need a spatula okay I'm using a spatula to scrape all the goodness out of my bowl all right let me set this aside now we're going to stir in the super fats We got to scoop up from the bottom. Make sure you work that spoon. Okay. Now we're going to put the lid back on this crock pot and we're going to let it sit. It's already been sitting with the power off for a few minutes, but we're going to let this sit for 30 minutes. We're not going to touch it and we're going to check the temperature and make sure that it's cool enough to add essential oils okay now we're going to talk about molds that you can use that you have at home any type of plastic container will work just as good as glass but I'm bringing out the glass containers today this is a glass loaf pan what we might call for a loaf of bread I guess uh, that is a handy one and it makes a tall bar of soap so that's good this is equally as wide one way as it is the other this one will make a skinnier bar but then you can cut it sort of like a tic-tac-toe board and you'll have six bar well one two three four five six seven nine bars of soap so this is a good container for using that you already have at home I'm gonna use this one today 
because I want my bars to be extra skinny because I'm actually making this soap for myself to use as to make homemade laundry detergent. So even though I've been talking about soap to use for bugging out, soap for storing for the long haul, and or just soap for yourself, for your own home, or a first time soaper trying to see if they would like to, or enjoy to do this, this is just a starting point. That's all. Now once we have our mold, then we need freezer paper. Freezer paper is plastic coated paper that prevents the soap from sticking to the glass and causes it to be removed easily. We're going to need two strips of freezer paper. The shiny side comes up. First you want one long ways and you don't want it to curl up around the edges too much but it's okay if it does a little. And we need some tape. I'm going to take and pull off a little piece of tape and I'm going to put my hand in, fold it over and I'm going to stick that way. Then I'm going to put this hand in here and put this hand in this way and that's how we're going to put the other piece because we got to be careful that we don't get the plastic paper too tight. So hand in here slide over, then get our X, get our curled over amount, and I totally messed that piece of tape up. But life happens. I never take out my bloopers because I think it's more fun when you see my mistakes. And life happens. It's good to see what other people's mistakes are and that way you can prevent making them yourself. Shiny side up, we have another strip. Now, you see the little folded crevices on the corners? That's going to make marks in the soap. So, you can take and cut this just a little skinnier. And so I'm going to cut just a little bit more off. Okay, we just want to be careful not to show too much glass in the corners because that's just going to make it hard to get our soap out. So I'm going to bend this down first and then fight with the tape. I'm gonna, and you don't have to make such a big flap. I just didn't cut it off. So my tape's going to come all the way to the bottom, but you don't have to do that. Just make sure you've got some bent over the top. lined kitchen container that we can use for soap. And this is what I'm going to pour the soap in today because as I said I'm making some plain Jane soap for homemade laundry detergent. But the things that we're going to add to the soap are not add to the soap but I'm going to show you how to add to the soap will make this wonderful for also using for your home on your personal body. Okay, I'll bring you back in a moment. Okay, now this is set for 30 minutes. I've only added the super fats. Now I'm going to put a candy thermometer in the soap and see what temperature it is. We want this to be 150 to 140. Once you let it get below 140, the soap becomes too, um, too hard to deal with. It doesn't mold well. It's just hard to deal with. So right now, we have already got over 150, and we are looking at 180. So this still has some time to go. 
I'm going to just put the lid on it and let it cool down. And I'll bring you back. Okay, I have removed the soap from the crock pot and put it in a glass bowl. I always use glass. Uh, otherwise, the soap closer to the edge of the plastic bowl will get too cool and begin to harden on you. So you want to use glass. It retains some heat and keeps a more even temperature. Alright, I find that if you swish it around every now and then, it gives you a more accurate reading. And right now we're sitting at 160. So we've got to come down 10 more degrees to put our essential oils in. So I'm doing a cinnamon and clove. And as I said, I highly recommend that you do tea tree. Uh, so I'm going to put in two tablespoons of cinnamon. Now cinnamon, if you leave it just like it is out of the container and put it in the soap, it makes the soap uh, have a um, exfoliation properties. So when you scrub the bar directly on the skin, it's extra cleansing and it helps to remove dead skin cells or broken dead drying skin. So that's a nice thing about just adding cinnamon straight to the soap. Okay, now I'm adding this now, but I'm also stirring. And by stirring, that's causing me to um, get some of the heat out. So I'm using this twofold. I need to come down 10 degrees, but at the same time, I also need to um, to stir in the spice. And while it's a little hotter, around 160, that makes a good time to move because the soap moves really well. And of course you've super fatted this soap, so that makes it more luscious and more fluid. It's, it's much easier to work with a super fatted soap. Now I recommend that you use tea tree, that you go to the fragrance calendar at brambleberry.com and do your fragrance according to their chart. And citronella or cedar wood or lemongrass for soap that is going to be used for a disaster situation or preparing ahead, wilderness, camping, anything of that sort. Um, that would be the soap essential oils that I would use. Okay, so now we have our cinnamon good and mixed in. Let me bring you up where you can see. There we go. And now I'm going to check the temperature again. As I said, I don't know why, but swirling it around, you don't want the... Um, the thermometer to touch the bottom of the jar. You want it to be in the middle of the soap. And we have, we're just a touch hotter than 150. So I'm going to stir it just a little bit more. We don't like much. And the reason that we have to bring our temperature down is because essential oils have flash points. And if you put the essential oil in when it's too hot, it will burn off or flash off the goodness of your essential oils. And your soap will not smell properly, and it won't have the benefit that you were desiring. So I'm going to just keep stirring. You're always wanting to clean down the edges because it will get firmer around the outside edge. And if you just keep pushing that back down the soap, then the heat will reconstitute it and make it back into soap. Or that is molten soap. Alright, let's check our temperature again. 
it's best if you don't be touching it because if you're touching this part here your own natural body temperature is going to influence it not to say that you would um, have temperature over 150 degrees hopefully well I've hit 140 and now I'm getting close to 150 I'm just waiting to see if it's going to hit 150, but it doesn't look like it is. Let's just stir it around one more time. Okay, it's sitting at about 151. I can live with that. So this recipe is calling for uh, I'm using cinnamon and clove and so I'm going to put in my clove now I need to get a tablespoon and if you put your clove in too soon you will know it because your nose will begin to sting uh, where you're burning off your essential oils and you just want to work this in really well you want to stir it up liberally uh, clean off the sides regularly and you just want to keep working with it till you get all the good smell in there and you know you can add a little bit more than what they say it's not a absolute all right let me show you what this looks like I had a little drop fault get away As you can see, it is very molten, very, very luscious, glistening, and it just smells awesome. All right, now we're going to, I'm not going to show you putting this into a mold. I'm going to show you using um, the soap that we were making before um, that we were using for possible bug out first time soap maker wanting to just make soap for your own home and or I'm using it to make homemade laundry detergent so I'm going to show you that next and I'm going to put this in a different kind of mold that I use because I'm going to sell this soap you have a great day keep watching okay our soap is ready it's nice and vaseline -y. And ready to go in the mold. Now I'm using this for laundry detergent but I've already showed you how to super fat your soap and I've already showed you how to add essential oils but for this particular soap I am using it for laundry detergent so it is going to be El Naturel. I'm cleaning down my sides and dumping that and here is the mold that we made out of a cooking dish and I'm just going to fill it by sort of plopping the soap into the container and swishing it around And this is what our pot looks like while I'm scraping it out.
Okay, now I'm going to put you right here where you can't see real well. So I'm going to tip it a little bit and I'm just going to take and swish the soap around and level it out with my spoon and then I'm going to take and I'm going to knock it. I'm going to pick it up and drop it several times. Now that gave us a nice, uh, it took out the air bubbles and it sort of leveled out the top. Now I'm going to set this, so this soap aside and you can take and put another piece of um, the freezer paper on top of it just loosely just to keep the heat in and you're going to want to let this set for 12 hours and I will show you in another video or add it to the end of this video how I cut it. Okay, now we're going to cut our soap. Now, as I've told you, I'm going to use this soap for laundry detergent, but I have showed you how to use a homemade mold that's readily found in most homes um, for your soap, which you could have added tea tree or other uh, essential oils to. And that um, is um, for first time soapers or soapers that are people who are wanting to make their own soap for um, storing for disaster relief um, to store away in case of, of uh, any kind of serious issue that would affect our economy and the way we live. I have just lifted it out of our mold. See how easy that was when you use the freezer paper? And then I'm just going to pull it back away from the soap and then slowly pull the freezer paper off the bottom. Now I'm just going to set that aside. You can reuse that. Uh, you can just take a flat object and scrape off the excess soap um, and it is totally usable again. Now I like to cut it from the slick side. I think I got something on it there. Now I showed you about using this. This is not a requirement. This is just if you want to and you would take this and line it up and what I do is I take and just cut off um, the edges when I used to use this this type of mold and and that just levels it out a little bit makes it a little bit easier to use and I'm just cutting off the little flared edges oh and a good long you want a knife that's longer then the soap is wide. Okay, now I'm just going to level it up between the lines. I'm going to bring you around let you see that. Okay, I have it to where it's just a little bit past the one inch here and the same here it's just a little past so it's even and then I'm going to slide it forward just a little bit and I'm going to find the middle. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, 
three, four, five. So right here on the six is the middle. And you can do this with a ruler as well. You can just take a ruler and, um, and mark your lines lightly with the point of the knife right on the mark that you're going to cut. Alright, and so our first cut is going to be right here on the six, and I'm going to just barely put my knife in, and then I'm going to slide it back so that I can see the six on the other side, and I'm going to line it up, and there we have it to where it's right on the six on the other side, and now I'm going to sit you back on my little makeshift um, camera stand. Yeah, you can see good. Okay, and I've already got my line there where the knife was, and I'm just going to cut. Alright, now I'm going to take this half and set it aside, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to line it up to where it is even with the six in the middle. So I have one, two, three. So here's the six. I'm going to make a mark. I'm going to look forward, find the six on the other side, and cut. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, especially if you're making this soap for storage or for personal use. Okay, uh, my camera, the memory card got full, and so now I have cut this half into twos, and now so we have four bars of soap. Um, this one will make four bars as well. Um, if you want to, on this rough side, you can just lightly go over it a little bit and, and take off the roughness. Okay, and if you are using this for your bug out bag, you might want this to be smaller. And so, you can take and cut it again. And this soap is perfect uh, for putting in your bug out bag. And now, the way you would store this is one of two ways. You can wrap this in regular cellophane, um, like what you put over a bowl and it sticks around the edges. Um, you take it and you lay it down and you fold it up and then you take a pair of scissors and cut off the top and then you take a heat gun and lightly go over it. More here, but it's like a little and take off, a little pat, a little pat. If you do too much, you will melt your soap. Um, or you can simply put this in your um, a vacuum sealer. Um, you can pull out a sheet and you know set them a little ways away from each other and put them in and seal them and it'll just come down around the edges or you can just seal one bar at a time and then it's perfect for storage uh, you do want to let these sit out and air for a week before you seal them and let them uh, finish curing and hardening up um, after two days you can take a bath with it but if you're going to store it or seal it uh, for long-term use, you want to um, let it cure for a week before you do that. Alright, well, I hope you have enjoyed this video about how, one, we can take this and grate it and make our homemade laundry detergent, or two, we can um, use this for our own personal use, or three, we can store this for long-term use, um, by vacuum sealing it, which would make it seal the longest, uh, for disaster preparedness. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please click the like button. Please subscribe. 
and please 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 um, leave me your comments I really enjoy your comments thank you and have a great day okay I just wanted to give you a glimpse because I know you got to see the other soaps that I was making um, this is citronella and tea tree um, that's a wonderful uh, soap to use to ward off insects and to kill insects when you take a bath with tea tree if you step away from the spray and lather up and then let it sit on your the foam sit on your body for an hour I mean for an hour for a minute or two and then rinse off if you have any critters um, that you've gotten from being outside um, they're dead and this is patchouli and tea tree and this is cinnamon and clove and this is the one that we mix together and these are the molds that I use they drop down on the sides and on the on the the end um, and if you will look at some of my other videos you can see how these molds work even how I build them so if you want to make some serious soap for long-term storage or if you're wanting to learn to make soap and you want to do it um, with more, um, you want to do it more, and I mean have a larger stockpile of soap, uh, you might be interested in building these soap molds. And so go on to my channel and look at how I build the soap molds. And uh, it's me and my father in the workshop. I think you'll really enjoy it. And this is the freezer paper. And um, this is a little test I've done with some new plastic that I found at Lowe's. And I'm going to do a video about that and see how that turns out. But um, these are the three soaps, the three loaves of soap that I made today. And I'm going to be making three more tomorrow. And I'll try to do some more videoing for everybody. Have a great YouTube night.